finally making another video. Been a crazy couple of weeks. I had strep throat. As soon as I felt better from strep throat after being stuck in bed for like five or six days, almost ripped my finger off. So still can't really skate. This is the third time I'm making this video. I got all the way through editing it yesterday and uh, couldn't export it for some reason. So I really got to lean in and learn how to use the Adobe editing software. Before I get into the tutorial, I want to invite you guys to join the Patreon group. I'm offering one-on-one -on -one video lessons with me over there. And we also do things like the monthly Q&A that every patron gets to take part in. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you'd like to ask me questions like I know a lot of you guys do in the comments section, that's the only place I'm going to be answering them. Let's get into the tutorial. Today's video, we're revisiting ollies. And I'm making this video because I've been requested to by a lot of people in the comments section over the past month or so. My first video on ollies was how to ollie higher. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the way that I teach a brand new skater, one of my students, to ollie. The way that I taught my wife, the way that I've taught probably 200 plus people to ollie in the nearly 13 years, I think. I think it's 13 years that I've been teaching skate lessons. So let's go over that now. now. The first thing is I make sure that everybody knows their stance, that they can push and that they can step up on their skateboard. I make sure that the student that I'm teaching is able to stand on their board in the perfect position for an ollie, lift up their board and drop it down. Now it's important that they're able to do this with their arms up, with their knees bent, keeping their back as straight as possible, with their back foot in what I call the ollie box, what I've mentioned in other videos, and with their front foot just up against the bolts at the front of the board. So we stand on the board, we'll do it in grass or maybe on foam. I'll have them lift up the board, bring it back down, make sure that their knees stay bent, that they're not leaning over with their back at all while they're doing this. And we'll do this constantly until I feel like they're comfortable. And this is one of the points where I've noticed that looser trucks become a problem with beginners. It's just one of the things that inspired me to make the last rookie mistakes video that I made. I know I got a lot of people responding in the comments who they are so far removed from what it's like to be a beginner and they're incapable of putting into context where someone else's skills might benefit from a different strategy from their skill set where they're like, Daywan Song skates his trucks loose, Evan Smith skates his trucks loose. That is completely irrelevant because I'm speaking to beginners. And if you took the time to watch the video, you would have heard me say, A, that I'm re recommending people to tighten their trucks up to medium, and B, that if you're having success with loose trucks, you should keep them that way. Now, if you've been skating for 20 years, like one of such commenters said he had been, there's really no reason you should be watching this video anyway. For all you beginners out there, if when you're trying to crouch down, you can't stay on the board comfortably and your trucks start to wobble, you might want to tighten up your trucks starting with half a turn and go from there and it'll become easier. Now, once my student is able to lift the board up and drop it down, and they're able to do it consistently and comfortably, and they're also able to do it without using their weight. If any of you has ever taken a jujitsu class, like I've done it and I'm crappy at it, but what I have learned every time that I go is that I can't use my weight and my strength to force a position. I have to use technique. And this is the same thing that I am teaching my students with this motion. So if you're leaning over to press the tail to the ground, I'm going to continue to stress to you that you have to do this by pushing your foot down, your back foot down, and lifting your front leg up. And when you drop the board down, your arms are still going to be up, you're going to drop back down. Once they're able to do this, we're still going to be on the grass, and now I'm going to introduce the next part of the ollie. And I've seen a lot of people trying to teach their friends how to ollie and things like that. And they're telling them basically where to stand. They're telling them bend down a little bit and then jump and push the tail into the ground and slide your front foot forward. And there's a reason that this makes it harder for people to learn. So for a beginner who's completely new to skateboarding, 
you want to introduce as few novel movements as possible because they're not comfortable with what they're doing. And the more you overwhelm them with tasks, the less chance they have at being successful. So what I do is I break the ollie down to its simplest form. So that first technique of being able to press down on your tail and lift up your front leg without leaning back to get the tail to the ground, we're gonna add to that the first part of your ollie, which is that your heels should not be touching the tail of the board. And the second part of the ollie, is, which is that your arms have to be up. Now, I don't recommend that they drop their arms when they crouch, but I do add that later on. So first, we're gonna just teach them to keep their arms up, make sure that the heel of their back foot's not touching the tail, because if your heel's touching the tail, you're, un you're able to put less power into the tail with your ollie movement. And we don't want that, especially for a child who's gonna have more of an issue creating the power that it takes to get the tail to the ground in the first place. We want to eliminate as many of those factors as possible. Keep your heel off of the tail, bend down. Now, when you've reached the lowest point that you can squat to without bending your back forward, because this is another issue I have to stress with beginners, they tend to lean over and bend their back and we don't want to do that because that also throws them off balance. This is part of the reason that they will wheel bite if the trucks are too loose. They're not used to keeping their back straight. So I'm going to stress that. Keep your back as straight as possible. Squat down as low as you comfortably can. And then initiate the ollie by pushing your tail into the ground. And you want the jumping motion to take place as soon as your tail hits the ground. Now I'm fully aware that the majority of us are not going to successfully execute this movement perfectly every time. I've been skateboarding for 25 years and I still don't. However, we have to attempt to execute these movements as perfect as we possibly can. So, to recap, our arms are up, our knees are bent, our back foot is in that ollie box, meaning the ball of your foot and your toes are touching the tail and they're about half an inch from the back edge of the tail. Your front foot is just touching the first two bolts that are closest to the nose, and your front foot is completely across the board. You're going to crouch down as low as you can comfortably, and then you're going to push your back leg into the ground. So you're gonna pretend that you're pushing your foot through the tail into the ground. And as soon as your tail makes contact with the ground, you're going to jump, and you're gonna lift your knees up toward your chest. Now, you'll notice I didn't mention sliding their front foot forward, and there's a reason for that. I never teach a beginner to slide their front forward, and there are two reasons for that. The first is that it's not necessary to get off of the ground with an ollie. The second is that over the 12 to 13 years that I've been teaching skate lessons, I realized that when I teach a student to slide their front foot forward in the beginning of their ollie, the majority of the students have an issue with that, and sometimes they'll slide their foot completely off the nose, which will cause an injury. So, since it's not necessary to get off of the ground with your first ollies to slide your foot forward, and since it complicates things and has, has led to some injuries, I don't teach that in the beginning. What I do is have them do as many of these ollies on the grass as they possibly can, and then I take them over to hopefully a rougher patch of asphalt. And the reason I choose rough asphalt is that it doesn't allow you to roll very much. And we don't want too much roll in the beginning for an absolute beginner because rolling feels scary. And my role as a teacher is to remove as many of the fearful factors as possible so that we can only focus on technique so that they can go then go and do as many ollies as they can and have fun. And yes, someone, the same person from another video mentioned that you can have fun without doing tricks, and that is also irrelevant because if you wanted to have fun by not doing tricks, you wouldn't be watching a video that helps you learn to do tricks. So nice try, guy. After they're able to ollie in place without sliding their foot forward on a rough patch of asphalt, we'll move on to a smoother piece of concrete, and I'll have them do these ollies in place, and once they're able to do that, we will then take one tiny push and I'll allow them to roll until they feel comfortable trying to ollie. And once they can do that comfortably, we go back over to the grass, right? 
So let me recap to this point. We've gone over how to stand on the board. We've gone over your posture. We've gone over pushing the tail to the ground and lifting your front leg up so that the front part of the board lifts, but not leaning over on the tail to create that motion, which is important. After we've done that, we've introduced pushing down on the tail quickly. And once your tail hits the ground, you jump. This is gonna create your first ollies. Once you can do that on grass, we ideally try it on a rough patch of asphalt where you won't roll very much. Once you can do that, we go to a smooth patch of concrete and do the same thing. And once you can do it on place on a smooth patch of concrete, like the, like the coated concrete at a skate park, then I allow you to roll slowly. Once you do that, we're now going to move on. And in order to move on, we're gonna go back to a patch of grass or the foam that's on modern playgrounds. And I'm going to then teach them how to stand in the ollie position that I showed them before, crouch, and then lift their board up again. But now as they're lifting their board up and pushing their tail down, they're gonna turn their ankle over slightly and slide their front foot up towards the nose of the board. And then they're gonna drop the board back down so that it's on all four wheels. And we're gonna rep out this motion over and over and over again until they feel or I feel that they're comfortable enough for us to add that into their ollie. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that on the grass until it looks like they're comfortable enough to go through it on the concrete. So they're going to keep their arms up, they're gonna have their back foot, the heel off of the board, toes and ball of their foot in the ollie box, front foot touching the front two, the first two bolts that are closest to the that are closest to the nose and forward the tail. So like the back two bolts of the front four, their front foot's gonna touch that. They're gonna crouch down. As soon as they've crouched as low as they can without bending their back, this is important, they're going to push their back foot down as if they were trying to push their foot through the tail. And as soon as the tail makes contact with the ground, they're gonna jump and start to slide their front foot forward while lifting their knees up towards their chest. When they land, they're gonna crouch down and hopefully they've kept their arms up this entire time. I'm not gonna have them drop their arms at this point either because in my experience, it's not necessary to add that until much later, until they're able to push and do this ollie comfortably. So once they've done that on the foam or the grass, Again, we're going to move to a rough patch of asphalt. We're going to go through it there. We're going to move to a smoother, coated, ideally, patch of concrete like what you have in a skate park. Once they're able to do that comfortably there, I'm going to have them push and roll and maybe slow down a little bit in ollie. And then we're going to slowly ramp up that speed until they're comfortable. So if you've watched this up to this point, the reason that I put this in the context of a lesson is so that it would be easy for someone trying to learn this to follow along with me and you'd be able to get your ollie up to this point. Now from here, what I would recommend is that you find a curb. You learn how to roll off that curb, first by allowing your front wheels to touch the ground, then by rolling and lifting up your front wheels the same way that I taught in the beginning of the ollie and rolling off so that you keep your speed. And once you're able to do that, ramp up your speed a little bit and learn how to ollie off of that curb. And as you're learning to ollie off of that curb, you should learn how to ollie up onto the curb and check your back truck, meaning catch your back truck on the curb and then push your nose up so that you're able to drag your wheels up onto the curb. Once you can do that, you should try to speed up and clear the curb with your back wheels so that you're ollieing up onto the curb. This is the way I teach my students how to ollie up onto an obstacle. This is the way that I learned to ollie up onto an obstacle. I didn't have to do it with a curb. I learned to do this with a picnic table. I was fortunate enough to be able to teach myself how to ollie the first day I skated. And within three months, I could ollie onto the top of a lunch table. But I learned to do that. I learned to get over the fear of clipping my back trucks unintentionally by ollieing up and clipping my back trucks intentionally to intentionally and then pushing forward with the notes. So I hope this helps you guys out. I hope this puts into context my teaching methods. Thank you for watching. Enjoy skateboarding and peace.